Well, we finally made it to the end of our introductory course on electrical engineering. And to end it, we're going to talk about coding in electrical engineering. Now to start it off, computers like binary. And from the last video, we know that a binary zero represents a low signal and a high signal represents a binary one. And the computers that we have today can really be thought of as a collection of transistors. And all the operations that computers can do today are unique combinations of transistors either being on or off or in this low or high state. So why do we use code? Well, people don't like using binary for a billion transistors. Imagine if you had to go through one by one and set every one of those transistors either high or low uh, for all of the operations. And it would take a lot of time to do. So we use things called programming language or code. Now this code that we type uh, after a few stages gets converted into binary and that can be applied to all of the transistors to do all of these operations. So if we write in some kind of code that the computer recognizes, we can have it do some kind of function or some task that we want it to. Uh, but if we have complete ignorance and we just want to tell the computer to do something, it, it doesn't want to do it unless it understands the code that it can convert into that binary. Now code can be used for a million different things. I actually think it's a very good idea for all freshmen in electrical engineering courses to go out and buy yourself an Arduino and do some code on that, do some projects. There's hundreds, if not thousands of projects online, uh, and they're very simple to do. So as an example of code, what we can do is the following. And then the question arises, why do electrical engineers need to know code? Uh, well, because of how integrated mechanical and electrical and computer systems are becoming, and not just your standard laptops, but most products on the market now, you really need to have a sense of what's going on in both mechanical engineering uh, and electrical engineering and computer engineering to really understand how you can make a successful product. So from a professional standpoint, uh, having one area of discipline is fantastic, uh, but having some cross knowledge between engineering disciplines is very advantageous. Now, as far as the future of this channel, we went into this intro to electrical engineering course where we talked about components, uh, circuit analysis, we talked a little bit about coding, and from there, we really want to expand into a circuit analysis course and then a logic course. Now the logic course will get very in depth on logic gates and things that we can do with them. Uh, from that, we'll go into an advanced circuit analysis and electronics stemming from the circuit analysis and our logic uh, will stem into programming basics and then some signal and system analysis that we can apply in coding and programming. From our electronics, we branch out into advanced electronics and electromagnetics. And from advanced electronics, uh, we can branch out into power electronics and then uh, some quantum mechanics for electrical engineers, which will lead us into our solid state physics and then our semiconductor devices. Now from electromagnetics, that is a very broad spectrum. Now we can go into things like antennas or we can go into things like optics. There's other fields, but these are some of the courses that I took uh, when I was at university and I found that they're very helpful. So from antennas, we can go into microwave engineering where you learn how to make kitchen appliances. Uh, we can also go into things like communications and then we have some overlap with optics and photonics. And now again with optics, we can spread into a area called nonlinear optics. And from there we can spread into an area of quantum optics. And then from microwave engineering, uh, we can really stem into advanced electromagnetics. And there's several more courses. Uh, these courses won't go that quick. They're usually a little bit longer and comprehensive. Uh, so really videos start becoming longer once we get past this line here. Uh, and then there's also this math and physics area I'd like to look into. I'm not too sure where I want to take that, uh, but physics, you know, would really wrap into the quantum mechanics for EEs. And then math is really used uh, to a very high degree once we get past this line. So that's where I want to take the channel. So I hope you found this intro to electrical engineering course uh, very helpful. I hope you learned something and I hope that you continue to be interested in electrical engineering.